Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Welcome, thank you for joining me. For those of you who turned up early, I did see a lot of names um, coming in early, so thank you all for joining early. As usual, if you can see me, if you can see my screen, if you can hear me, put it in the chat, let me know. Just want to make sure that everything's working great before we get started. How are you doing? <coughs> hello, hello. Good afternoon. Hey, how's everyone? A lot of people here now, and I'll wait a minute or two before we get started. Put it into the chat if you can hear me, just help me out, let me know. All right, should we get started? I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me because no one's responding yet. Hello? Okay, if you're here and we're ready to go, let me know, put it into the chat. Just want to make sure that you guys can hear me it shows that it should be fine but i just want to double check good stuff hello hello okay let's go Questions. I need to see that. Hey, Vincent. How are you doing? Okay. Um, you guys got any questions? I was looking at the chat. Uh, in the chat box. So I am now getting. I now see your replies. All right. Sorry about that. My mistake, looked at the wrong window there. Okay, so let's go. Um, today we are doing the IC Markets webinar, everything about margin, leverage, and swaps, right? So as usual, if you have any questions, please put it into the questions or into the chat box. I will be looking forward to your questions and I will be um, answering your questions. You know, ask it anytime you get a question. I'll be happy to answer your questions as we go along all right so as usual before the start of the webinar a quick disclaimer any information shared or contained in this webinar should not be construed as advice and is not present and is presented as educational material only international mar capital markets ic markets has not considered your objectives financial situation needs and you should consider its appropriateness for your circumstances um, today we are talking about the swaps, leverage, and margin. So I probably wouldn't be looking at the um, markets too much, but you know, if I come across and I share my views and opinions about um, some trade ideas or some trade processes, please make sure you do your own due diligence before you enter into any trades. All right, so few things to cover today, right? A few things to cover, um, which could be quite quick. So I'm still looking for your questions. And um, if you have any feedback or anything that you'd like me to go 
through all right so thank you all i see your messages now fantastic all right <coughs> so what is leverage what things we're going to get through today what is leverage what is margin um, is an ideal leverage to trade with and how does swap work hey kelvin how are you doing all right um what i would also check right we have big handful of you guys here how many of you are actually um totally new right or relatively new to trading i know i see simon i see a lot of familiar names fully experienced traders here as well but how many of you are um, completely new or relatively new to trading let me know just so that you know i can possibly tweak this a little bit to help you or to explain this a bit more to help you with your when you start trading <laughs> traded for two years new one year experience. one year experience is not new vincent that's a good experience level two years tuantan is new not new but just one year away okay good so a lot of you have some experience have traded before um so you know this is a good bit of refresher um a good bit of a different possibly some different ways to look at things as well so you know let me know if you have any questions from here <coughs> so okay quick i forgot about that a quick introduction about myself my name is Jin Dao. Everyone calls me Jin. Uh, most people call me Jin. I'm one of the investment analysts here at the Everest Fortune Group, we are award winning research team. We've got our technical analyst award finalists for best FX and equity research in 2019, 2020, and 2021. And from my previous experience, um, I've managed a multi million dollar fund um, on a daily basis, but I do now for myself and for the team here is I do manage uh, my own trades on a daily basis. So you would have seen me sharing a lot of trade ideas, a lot of setups and analysis as well. So if you haven't already, you know, check it out, let me know if you have any feedback on my analysis and trade ideas that I've been sharing. All right. Hey, how are you doing? Good stuff, thanks for joining. All right, part-time trader for two years, Ilma's fantastic. That's uh, you know, everyone starts part-time. Um, you build from a part-time basis. You know, if you have that aim or that eventual goal to become a full-time trader, like myself, I started off part-time, tried on a, I traded in the evenings mostly, and then from there I tweaked my trading. From the evenings to the afternoons and then i did from the afternoons to the full-time trading all right thank you for this topic although i've traded i've never really analyzed how margin and leverage affects me some people say i should stick to one to 100 some say it's too high if i manage my stop loss does leverage matter desiree how are you doing i will answer that question um i think maybe seven slides in i can't remember the slide number um so i will get to that answer that i will answer that question all right hey mark how are you doing full-time trading one year fantastic it seems like there's a lot of full-time traders here as well so i'm really looking forward to um helping you with your trading journey with that oops why doesn't this scroll okay what is leverage what is leverage right and this works fantastic if you Put your feedback if you help me with some answers as well. What is leverage? Basically, in the most simple way to answer it, it's the ability. Leverage is the ability or gives you the ability to control a large amount of money using very little of your own money. Okay, so <clears throat> we all know when you start your trading account, you know, most of you would have put in. Um, at a starting point, maybe a thousand dollars, and with leverage on a thousand dollars, you get um, if it's one to one hundred, you get um, ten thousand dollars, or you get a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars as a position size, right? A maximum 
um, position size there. So putting in a small amount to control a large amount, uh, control a large amount of money or large position size. If we didn't have leverage, right? If we didn't have leverage, you'd be trading possibly directly to the banks, right? So if you trade directly to the banks, you'd be a one-to-one -one leverage, which means that if you wanted to enter a one standard lot trade, you would have to put in a hundred thousand dollars to enter the trade. Compared to with now retail brokers um, providing the leverage, you'd have to put in a thousand dollars or slightly more than a thousand dollars or you know a reasonable amount to get the one to one hundred leverage so that you can control a hundred thousand dollar position. Okay, so it lets you put in a little bit of your money to control a large a larger position. This is a question there. Anyone trades um, through the banks on a one-to-one -one leverage? I've done it before. I've done it for a short time. Um, anyone trades on a one-to-one -one leverage through the banks? It's a it's an interesting way to do it. Needs a big capital amount, but you know, use the leverage. Use the leverage. It helps um, having a bit of leverage to leverage to leverage your account right it is a double-sided sword it is a double-edged sword i will tell you more about that slightly moving on as well <laughs> okay so some examples right um you know while while i'm going through this as well let me know what is your initial deposit amount because you know i started off with ten thousand dollars when i first ever started trading right the first time i downloaded a brokerage an mt4 account the first time i deposit my uh, into the account was ten thousand um us dollars so i'm very keen to know where, what does everyone start with and that's why my example here was ten thousand is ten thousand dollars as well okay so based on this example as you're putting in your um deposit amounts there Based on this example here, you can see starting amount at 10,000, right? If you had a leverage, some brokers or some um, jurisdictions require brokers to provide a one is to 20 or about a one is to 20 leverage. What that means is you got $10,000 on a one is to 20, 20 multiply by 20, you have a position, you can control a maximum position of 200,000, right? A maximum position of 200,000. One is to 30 in Australia, yes it is. I think it's one is to 20 or one is to 25 in Singapore, right? Um, a lot of the other brokers and offshore jurisdictions will provide a one is to 100, right? It's one is to 100. So on a $10,000 account, multiply by 100, you get a million dollar position you have to control a million dollar position um or you know there are other jurisdiction that allows one is to 500 and then on ten thousand dollar account you get five million as a position okay so a few things to note on leverage and margins as we go through this is that leverage also helps you <coughs> with leverage and margin it also helps you protect um, the downside level okay uh, look out for pro downside protection that you have a negative capital protection so you don't lose more than you deposit all right so there's one thing that i always keep an eye out a negative capital protection so you don't lose more than deposit and that's why you have leverage to help you control a bigger positions um yeah 500 to one 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 to 500 we can look at it in either way so long as we know what we're multiplying to, there are some that provides one to two thousand. Um, it is. I mean, I don't know which which broker we're talking about there, but it could be, it could be legit. It could be safe. It's just another way to um, provide more leverage. But always remember that leverage is a double-edged sword. So as much as they put in. They give you that much amount, you know, it could help you make a lot in a small move, but it could also 
cause you to lose um, a lot of the capital in a very small move as well. So just be extra careful on the super big leverage, right? You can't lose more because um, you get a margin call. Yes, that's right. And I'll tell you more about margin calls shortly as well. Okay. So what I encounter with a lot of you know truly new newbie um, traders or even no newbie people who hasn't even got into trading and they've heard horror stories about trading, they get worried when they see that 200, that 1 million, that 5 million numbers, and they start thinking, oh, wow, if I traded and I lost, I'll lose a million dollars, and um, you know, you'll be in debt of a million dollars despite only depositing 10,000. No, that's why I always highlight that it's a position, not a dollar amount, and I have left out a dollar value there. So it's a trading position, but your capital amount is a dollar value at 10,000. Okay, so these are all trading positions. To give you an idea of how to use these trading positions and why I'm highlighting over and over that you know you could make good amounts, you or you could lose big with leverage, and a lot of you have said you know double-edged sword is when we start looking at calculating profits, right? We start thinking about looking at your capital amount, your trade size, how attractive it looks when you're trading, um, when you're over trading. But I'm here to remind you of the potential downside. All right. So why I call it as a high risk here? Oops, I have a mouse. All right. Why we call it as a high risk here in a, in a low risk comparison? Okay. Let's just approach this as, as if we have two different traders, one with a high risk appetite, one with a low risk appetite, both with a $10,000 account. All right. Both with a $10,000 account at a one is to 100 um, leverage amount. Okay. So on $10,000, the high risk trader would look at a trade and say, hey, for example, um, Pound dollar dropping has been dropping over the past couple of days. You know, they're saying, okay, I think that pound dollar is going to drop further. They enter five lots, right? Enter five lots. And as I scroll back, you can see that on 10,000 at a one is to 100, they've got a million dollar or million trading position. They've entered five lots. They've actually used a total value of transaction at 500 thousand so they've used half of their maximum trading position to enter the trade if the trade drops <clears throat> because they sold the pound dollar down right so let's just say we're selling selling the gbp usd right <clears throat> And it does drop at 100 pips. What will happen? You know, because one pip is $10, approximately $10 at five lots. So one pip is $50. 100 pips is $5,000. <clears> right? So this is one reason. And then you'll see that you'd have 5000 of your $10,000 capital. You would have made 50% of your trading capital. This is the one reason why a lot of new traders who don't understand the idea of don't or try to ignore the idea of risk management um, tends to over trade, right? Tends to over trade, over leverage because the upside looks very attractive. The upside where one trade making 100 pips will give you a 50% increase in your trading capital looks very attractive. I'll show you the flip side to this on the next slide. But when we consider the low risk trader, Right at a ten thousand dollar account, con maximum trading position they can control is a million. What they've done, they would enter one standard lot because they're low risk. Total transaction value ten thousand at a hundred pip profit. Now oh, that should have been a thousand dollars, right? That should be a thousand dollars. They have made one percent of their trading capital. Right, one percent, no, ten percent of their trading capital. 
Okay, so what this means is when you're going lower risk, hey, you might not make as much as your as over trading would, but you're taking on a lot less risk. You're taking on a lot less risk. On the flip side, right? Um, Kevin has been saying that, a few of you have been saying that, Ilmaz has been saying that as well. It's a double-edged sword. It's double-edged sword. Why so? It's because, okay, I, these numbers here are a bit off. There should be a thousand. They should be minus 10%, okay? So you wouldn't even do that kind of numbers. <clears throat> but looking at the high risk side here, if you enter ten, if you had ten thousand dollar capital, yeah, five. You entered five lots. It's way, way, way over leveraged. Total value of transaction at five hundred thousand. Hundred pip loss would make you lose five thousand dollars. Total loss of trading capital would be fifty percent. All right. So in one quick move, yeah, so it's ten percent of capital. <laughs> so one quick move. You would have lost 50% of your capital if you did the high over leveraging method, if you over leveraged on your trades. Okay. And bear in mind that first trade or that one trade that loses 50%, the subsequent trades, you can't trade as big. It's going to take so much more, so many more trades to actually recover back to that $10,000 level. Okay, it's going to take more than the 100 pip, more than 100 pips to recover. I think the number was about 250 because, you know, you have to trade a smaller size. You've only got a $5,000 account there. Um, just to clarify, if you didn't increase his lot size, you use one lot, then his loss will be the same as the low risk person. Yes, that's right. So if you didn't do a five, right, if you did only a one lot, then this would be a total value of actually this would be a hundred thousand. So these are on wrong numbers there, right? A hundred thousand. This would be a thousand dollars. This would be ten percent. Still, still too high. A ten percent loss is still too high. But hey, it's much easier to recover compared to the fifty percent loss. All right. Now, as we go through this, quick question to everyone is: What should a risk what's your maximum risk on your trade be how many percent how many percent should you should you take as a maximum risk on your trade fantastic textbook answers good stuff all right so yes one two 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 to three maximum of three percent um so i would say a maximum of three percent i would say about a one to two percent would be a most um, reasonable um, risk number there. So yeah, it's these numbers are this should be should add a, another zero to these numbers at the back there. Um, Mark. <coughs> okay. Good. So zero point five to one percent. I use small count. Yep, you could do that. Okay. So I'll tell you more about um, why. Why I'm asking you this question is because you guys know, you guys have heard me tell you about trading so much. <clears throat> There's never one standard approach for everyone. Small accounts, big accounts, different way of trading, different styles of trading will also take on different risk levels as well. Um, different styles of trading, you consider your um, leverage and your margin requirements a little bit differently as well. Okay, so everything's a little bit dynamic everything's a little bit dynamic so tweak it but it should never be more than a three percent um, per trade all right so what is margin all right margin is really the amount of money that the broker sets aside to protect the trade right whenever you enter a trade um, the broker sets aside a amount if you have a one is to 100, it'll set aside about 1%. If you have a one to 400, it'll set aside at 0.25%. So it's the margin required of the total transaction value set aside to protect the trade. Because they want to make sure that you're not going to lose more than 
you have put in, so you need to set aside in a worst case scenario, um, they can take from that margin amount. So margin amount um, <clears throat> is not just a fixed number, it also depends on the leverage number there, which will translate to the margin percentage that they take. Okay, so actually a little bit more interesting way to look at it. I started up a demo account, don't worry, this is not real money because it is losing money right now. Uh, I started up a demo account just to show you what it all means. All right, so if, for example, you had a $5,000 deposit, all right? Had a $5,000 deposit. In this case, I just randomly put in a um, buy on a pound dollar there. Straight away, your margin amount, your margin amount is the amount that the broker sets aside, right? The broker sets aside, um, held on the trades which are already open. So that's fixed for 51.90, okay? If you entered multiple trades, then that margin amount will keep growing, will keep increasing because every trade that you enter, the margin amount increases. Make sense so far? Then the free margin, where is it? A free margin here, oops. A free margin here denotes that it's your, indicates the amount of funds available to open new trades. So now at 4,440 based on this screenshot, you know, and that the margin requirement is about 450, hey, you could go for another, you know, in the roughest calculation about another couple of trades to buy the pound dollar um, up to a $4,000 because you got a $4,000 free margin there. Okay, your margin level, right? Your margin level is a calculation of, it's a calculation of the total amount <coughs> from your equity, your balance, um, profit loss levels, and then holding that main, to maintain that position there, All right? To maintain that position there. Right now, margin level is at, uh, 1,082, okay? So what happens, I had a question there from um, Kelvin, from Kelvin, is what happens in a margin call and how does it work, right? These are the three main numbers that you wanna pay attention to, your margin amount, your free margin, okay? and your margin level. Margin level is a percentage. It's a percentage of the margin and the free margin, all right? How is it calculated? It's a percentage of the margin and the free margin. So what happens, it makes a bit more sense when you look into this, is what happens when you have a margin call, all right? What happens when you have a margin call? I'll, because of that demo account ready, what I'll do as well later is we're going to try and get that account to that margin call level or the stop out level just to show you what happens. Okay. So, a margin call, and we always want to avoid this is one of the things that you want to avoid is when equity, right? When equity here falls below 100% of the margin required, right? Falls below the margin level. So equity goes below margin level to maintain your positions. Right now, hey, I got 4,800 in equity, the margins at 450. I've got almost or more than 10 times the margin amount. It's still okay. In the event that this becomes 4,500 and this becomes 400, then you get that, or it comes to that even number, then you get that margin call call that you don't want from the broker because it will say or it will be a message that says please deposit more cash to or please deposit more money to sustain your positions or close out all the trades close out your account altogether that would be where they call you like really physically call you and say hey you need to deposit more um, to, to keep that trade happening right um, I usually 
most traders won't get to that margin call level if you trade properly, if you trade one or two trades at a time. What happens or what I've seen is uh, margin call happens when people, when traders take on a, um, I always forget that word, a martingale approach. What a martingale approach means is that as prices drop, they buy, right? Prices drop some more, they buy even more. So they might buy one. This is, I'm not teaching you Martin Go now, but just giving you an example. They buy one and then they drop, they buy two or 1.5, it drops some more. They buy three, it drops some more, and then they buy four, All right? So as an example, <clears throat> as price drops, they keep buying, they keep doubling the risk, they keep doubling or 1.5 times the risk, and it keeps, and if it keeps dropping, that's when the open positions become massive, right? The open positions become massive because you're losing money here, you're losing money here, you're losing money, you're losing money. <clears throat> the equity amount becomes larger than the margin amount, right? Account doesn't go bust yet. Account doesn't go bust yet. Account um, broker calls and say, hey, if you want to keep doing this kind of trading, you need to deposit more cash to keep your positions open. I have come across people who did deposit more, hoping that price would retrace towards the upside. But I can tell you that most of the time, what happens is that it doesn't. Right, it doesn't. The only time that price bounces back up is when the account goes to zero. Okay, so I try not to. I will always advise not to do that. Um, you know, you're always betting on when price is going to turn. Trading is not about betting. Um, it's about taking the analysis and applying the analysis. So that's the margin call when you get a call to top up on the deposit to increase your margin amount, right? To increase the available margin amount. On the flip side, on the worst case scenario, is when you get stop out. When you get stop out, which is when free margin, <clears throat> free margin here, falls below 50% of the margin required. Right, when free margin falls below 50% of the margin required, positions get closed out automatically. Right, you don't even get a call, um, you don't get a request to deposit more money. MT4, the trading platform, will close out your positions automatically from the largest losing position to the smallest. All right. <laughs> um, was emails i will get to that uh, which margin level to recommend i would say that um, it depends on how you trade so i'll tell you more about that shortly what's the difference between martin go and dollar cost averaging um not much difference just the amount the trade side one is the trade sizing that you do and very seldom do i see traders um do on Forex, do a dollar cost averaging. Most of the time we see dollar cost averaging um, happen on index or on equities, um, which has a little bit more directional move compared to in FX where we see more of a cyclical, cyclical move. Um, that's why people try to do um, Martin goes with that big, you know, that cycle, right, that cycle of the move. So they expect to, you know, keep selling 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 to wait for it to drop or keep buying to wait for that push towards the upside so when we talk about dollar cost averaging they're actually looking for you know recent small moves they're looking to buy at some point <coughs> for that push up <coughs> what is grid grid is quite similar to um, a martin Gold, but they do they put it in a little bit of a grid just to let you know exactly or in the approximate levels to buy or to sell into that position. So it just puts it into a grid format. 
All right, so um, things you want to avoid. I've seen, I haven't seen anyone get stopped out completely. I've seen people, no, actually, I've seen people get into a margin call first, did two margin calls, and then after that, get stopped out um, completely. Very terrible approach. And, you know, the I don't think that trader continued trading after that. So, and what I always remind everyone is that if you trade <clears throat> properly um, with proper leverage, not over trading, you know, it's almost, it's actually quite hard to get into a margin call and to get fully stopped out um, just based on trading, even if it's a average strategy, right? I know most of you here don't have an average strategy. You all actually are quite good with your trades, um, but you know, the main thing that kills trading accounts is over leveraging and um, over trading. Is it true that institutional traders hunt for stop loss? Um, I, I get that question a lot. I don't actually think they hunt for stop loss on purpose. I think that it just happens to be a confluence of levels. So a lot of times where, you know, retail traders would have their stop loss levels or their take profit levels it will always coincide with a demand level <coughs> or supply level um, taken on from institutional traders as well so just yeah I don't it's a bit hard to trade if i keep thinking about um you know someone else trying to stop you out or hunt for your stop loss you know i could i rather think about it as finding a good and appropriate place to have my stop loss levels rather than think about someone hunting it. Um, there's a method, it was computer generated program through a trader where all my trades all got stopped out when I wasn't monitoring their strategy. So I started learning it on my own with many thanks to your team. Fantastic. Um, you know, Simon, that does happen quite a lot. I have seen a lot of um, situations like that happen as well. So yeah, it is good. I'm, I'm glad that you have um, learned and built your own and we're always here to help you with that as well, <laughs> all right? So a lot of you have asked the question, what is the ideal leverage? What is the ideal margin? What I'll tell you is that, right? There is really no, unfortunately, and I guess you all know what I was gonna say already, there's really no ideal leverage or no ideal margin there's no one number that I tell you you all should take, all right? Um, I would actually say that um, a one is to 100, a one is to 100 would be a good leverage amount, right? You can go for more leverage. You don't have to always use the full leverage, right? You can go for more, but you don't have to use all of it. That means you got a $10,000 account, you got a one is to 100, you've got a million, dollar position, you can control a million dollar position. You don't have to enter a trade that covers all one million. You could enter a, so let me just scribble it out there. You got 10K, right? You have a million dollars on a one is to 100. You could still enter a trade that keeps to that 1%, right? <coughs> Um, 10% be 100,000, 1% be 10,000. So you could be looking at your trade at a $10,000 size, which is a one. In terms of a lot sizing, that would be a one mini. Oh. A one mini lot. Okay. So you could um, do, you know, I would say that you go for the highest leverage. One is 100. Um, but you don't have to use the full amount, you know, just because you have a hundred thousand, you got one million position maximum, you don't have to go for 10% or the full one million, right? I would say 10,000, get a million, trade at a 1% at 10,000 per trade, that would be fantastic, okay? So that's why I said per trade. So like Simon did ask, right, is it is more average better for scalping? The style of trading does affect <clears throat> Um, whether you look at a bigger leverage 
or smaller leverage. If you're a scalper, right? If you're a scalper, then you might be entering at a bigger size because you have what scalpers do, right? What do scalpers do? They have small trades, short-term trades. So they might be looking at a move towards the downside, look for a sell. Stop loss might be very tight, maybe five or 10 pips. I'm terrible at writing with the mouse. Five to 10 pips, so a very fixed, a fixed and very small stop loss, right? Which gives you that opportunity to take on a bit more of um, a higher leverage, a bit more of a bigger trading size, because you're looking for that move down to close out the trade quickly. Right? Scalpers hold on to trades for minutes, right? short term, very short term trades, minutes, make some money, and they're out. And they always have that fixed stop loss, very disciplined with their fixed stop loss. All right. Um, Swap fees, I will tell you about that, Chris. Swap fees will be dependent, not so much on leverage, but on the trading size, but I'll show you that shortly. <laughs> so your style of trading will determine, could be one of the determinants of what kind of leverage, what kind of leverage size you should be taking. Swing traders, right? Let's talk about swing traders, where you'd be looking at holding on to trades. Let's say if you're buying there, holding on to trades for a long term right why swing traders one is your stop loss might be larger your stop loss might be larger and two because you're holding on to trades for a long term that could affect the average or the other trades that you're going to get into right if you have a ten thousand dollar account and you have one trade at one percent if you have two trades that'd be two percent if you have three trades there be 3%, that's our max risk that we're happy to take on board already, okay? So think about that kind of, um, the average number of trades and whether you're looking at a scalping or a swing trade, because so long as your trade is running, you can't enter another trade if you've got too many trades. So there's one way to limit, also to make sure that you limit the number of trades that you get into. All right. So a lot of times, you know, um, traders that I coach and people that I guided before, they look at their trade account and they go, okay, I'll just enter one mini. Or if, they, if they're disciplined, they'll enter one mini. Most of the time they enter possibly a little bigger. And then they will have one trade running. Suddenly they will see another trade and then they'll enter another one. And then another one and then another one. Before you know it, they have a whole list of five trades and then they over leverage. They over leverage, all you need is price to continue moving in one direction. They get a margin call, they get stopped out. <coughs> all right. The next thing to also consider is your stop loss levels. Is your, where's my mouse again? Is your stop loss levels. Why so is because if you have a fixed stop loss, you know what kind of risk you're taking on board. You know, you can calculate the amount of risk, you can calculate the trade size that you're gonna get into. You're able to better manage that leverage amount. All right, so whether it's a fixed stop loss, that means if you enter a trade, it's always gonna be um, a stop loss of 30 pips, All right? You can You know what trade size you're gonna get into, what kind of leverage, you're going to be using or whether you're going to be coming towards the risk of over leveraging okay or if you have a dynamic stop uh stop loss usually with a swing trade you know you could have a 30 pip or maybe a 50 pip stop loss or even a 100 pip stop loss um unlikely right try not to have a 100 pip stop loss um then you would want to lower that leverage or lower that trade size so you don't take on too much leverage okay the main thing is the main thing is why i say take as much you know take that one is to 100 but you don't have to use the full amount you don't need to be afraid of leverage once you you know really learn how to manage it okay the only time leverage should really never be used if you want to take a hands-off a fully hands-off approach to your trades that means you enter 
big and then you don't watch it. That's going to be very dangerous because you never know how it's going to swing. Um, so also because you could over leverage, right? Otherwise, leverage can really be used quite successfully if you manage it properly, okay? Remember that double-edged sword. Remember the idea that as much as you can make 50% in one big trade, you could also lose 50% of that trade of your capital amount, right? Um, small amounts of real leverage applied to each trade affords more breathing room, right? So that means if you enter a trade, you know, because you got a small leverage, you are able to set a, possibly set a wider stop loss or give you more breathing room for price to move around before pushing towards upside in that case, right? A high leverage can quickly wear out your account all right if you don't keep it in check so bear in mind that leverage is flexible right? you get a full amount but you don't have to use all of it okay any further questions at this point nope good stuff let me just see okay good so the next part of this is swap okay before i get into swaps Right. Um, again, for you guys to answer is, <clears throat> do you normally hold on? How long do you hold on to your trades for? A couple of days, a couple of hours, or a couple of hours, a couple of days, or a couple of weeks? A couple of days from Desiree, a couple of days, usually a couple of days, some days. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, actually, it's good. Most of you. Um, hold on to it for a couple of days. We have a couple of people saying hours and minutes. Hours, days, and one or another. <laughs> All right. Okay, why I ask that, like for myself, what I do is I do short-term trades. All right. So my trades usually are a couple of hours, a couple of minutes to a couple of hours, right? So uh, because we, you know, I have webinars to do, I have other stuff to do. So once I'm not, if I'm not watching a trade, I would prefer to close it out. So my trades are minutes to hours. And then as I build the profits for the couple of days, then I would go on into another trade that would be a couple of um, days. All right, so it be minutes and hours, and then after that into days. So I build that profit to try and take on some risk for, to build the profit to cover a potential stop loss and then the next trade to be a bit wider okay when you start holding trades over a couple of days that's when you start considering swaps All right when you start holding trades over a couple of days that's when you start considering swaps swaps is basically <clears throat> swap is basically the cost right the cost of holding a currency overnight or over days <clears throat> right swap is the cost of holding a currency overnight or over days <clears throat> and what how do you calculate swap um what is swap exactly is really the difference of interest rates between the currencies right the difference of interest rates what i would say is that Yes, swap is also referred as the interest, right? So it's a difference of interest. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't be too bogged down by actually calculating the swap number, all right? Because it is the difference between the interest rates offered in Australia and the interest rates offered in the US calculated. And then, so if you bought the Aussie dollar, you'll be paying a two dollars and six cents in swap that's on a one standard lot um, if you sold it then you'll be receiving a 0 0.3 on a swap <coughs> um okay good i will i will get to that question i'll just check on that i'm not sure whether there's swap on commodities but that's a good question something, something i haven't thought about yet i'll show you okay um so you can get the swap number there so i just took out a little bit of a screenshot at this point just to show you the swap there that's a difference of 
between interest rates between the two currencies. Another way to look at swap. Uh, swap fees are normally positive for long and negative on short positions. Well, not really. So you can see that in this case here, long positions are all negative. Um, short positions are positive. So previously it was, previously it was, um, when we had, when we were in the period of every country providing negative rates, every country, every central bank providing negative rates, then we actually did see um, swap was actually terrible, right? We did see everyone was in negative rates or in zero interest rates positions. Um, we were paying swap in a lot of scenarios, but in this case, you see US CAD as an example. Whether you bought or whether you sold, you'll be paying rates. All right, so it's not always a, um, but a receiving or a paying out. There are situations where you could be paying swap on both um, a long or a short position. Another way, if you didn't want to jump onto the link to check out the swap rates, you can actually get it on MT4. I will show it to you <clears throat> on MT4 as well. But what you can do is you can jump onto Market Watch, right? Choose the pair that you're looking for. In this case, the Aussie US. Right click and then look for a specification. And then this comes up, right? I'll scroll down and then you see it tells you the swap rates when it's long, the swap rates when it's short. And also remember that there is a three day swap. So that number actually increases. Um, on a Wednesday, so you get actually paid more, you pay more swap or you receive more on a Wednesday. So that's a three days swap on Wednesday. One of the reasons why I don't hold on to my trades too often um, because of that swap rates. If you are looking to buy, um, in this case, the Aussie US. Okay, um, I've had people ask, you know, is it worth? In this case, you know, Aussie US. If you sold the Aussie US, you'll be receiving 0.31 as a swap. Is it worth to just keep selling the Aussie US down um, and receiving that swap? I can tell you that you know with the price volatility, the swap isn't as is going to be isn't as profitable as you would trading it properly. So right. So the example what I'm saying is that. People are saying, okay, if it's Aussie, I'm selling it down, selling it down. If it's I built my selling positions, I keep receiving swap. Is it worth doing that? You know, but what if price turns the swap that you received on those levels would not be worth if price turns, you actually be losing a lot more. So don't trade for the swap. Understand that the swap is there as a cost for holding on to the trades. Right, so things that I consider when I'm trading, I'm looking at the speed of how I can get out of a trade just so that I don't incur more cost as well. Okay, <laughs> so coming to that question, um, so that's all I have for the slides. What I'll show you now is an MT4. So coming from that question, uh, with regards to current to the commodities let's just check that out um, let me see where is it xau usd so there is you can check out the swap rates there um sg right so you can see for gold there is <laughs> the swap rates there and um <clears throat> I don't see Brent WTI. Let me just check again. WTI. Okay, you don't. I don't see any long uh, swap rates. No swap rates there. Let me just check another example. Um, well, let's check out corn just to be different okay so no swap rates there so it doesn't seem like we get crude oil or wti with swap rates but for gold there is okay i hope i answer your question there sg 
Um, so one thing I would also do now to make sure this is a demo account. Yep. Okay. So <clears throat> you can see pound dropping now. We bought in at that point just to run this example. I'll take away this stop loss just to, all right, this is a, not something you should be doing. I'm just trying to show you how we, how the numbers will change. All right, so take note now, the margin level is 451.9, free margin is 412.4125. If we bought again at this point, right, straight away, your margin level goes up to 686. A question there for gold, I'm not sure about other currencies. When I do a buy and a sell, my margin became may become half. Can I explain more and if it's beneficial? Hmm. Well, one thing is don't do a buy and a sell, but we can try that. Okay, I'll try that now as well. So you can see that pound as we were buying, we got two buys. It is dropping. Margin level increases, so that's amount set aside. Um, the required margin amount set aside for your trades, for your open trades. And then the margin, free margin has dropped with your equity amount at 4.5. So we're looking at between those two numbers there. What I'll do now is I will also look into gold. Let's try that out. So you're saying that. Um, Buy and sell margin may become half. Let's try a buy now. It's a thousand, so it was 600 before. And then let's try a sell now. No, so it's still it stays the same, All right? It stays the same because um, you pretty much hedged that position. So your margin level hasn't changed because they know that for one position, if a position loses, the next position is going to win. So it's hedged off that position. So it only changes when you have um, a so-called unhedged position. But try, you know, not try. Definitely don't hedge. Don't buy and sell at the same point because it's a zero-sum game. You're going to win one, you're going to lose one. All right. Um, is swap the actually interest or just the difference between the interest rates of the two currencies? Is a calculation based on the um, is a calculation of the difference between the interest rates of the two currencies. So it's it's a cost, it's a it's a revenue that you get, which we consider as interest, but it's calculated based on the interest rates policies from the two currencies. All right. So I hope I answered your question there, Zabar, and also Desiree for with regards to gold. All right, so <clears throat> look at it now. I'm going to try and burst this. I don't like doing this. Um, but in this case, at 4,500, if you over traded, I'm not sure this would work. Oh. Do it eight lots. Um, to buy, you know, then you see your margin level start growing and your free margin is. Well, it's jumping a little bit up now because it's moving, but it starts dropping. Then we get to that point of a um, of a uh, margin call, possible margin call there. Okay. One time, how to back test properly? Um, back test properly depends on what you're going to back test. If you're back testing a strategy, an EA kind of strategy, or a um, discretionary strategy, you can either use the strategy tester right you can where is it uh, i lost it you can use a strategy tester there okay or other way you can do it more manually is to start plotting lines depends on the strategy that you're trying to test and yes and you can also check out that video about back testing done by desmond as well all right um, i'm sure it'll be up or it was uploaded onto youtube so check out the IC Markets YouTube channel. I'm sure you're finding that video about um, back testing. Alrighty. So with that said for today, 
we're going to draw an end to the session. If you have any questions, if you have any um, further qu queries, please reach out to me. Let me know. I'll be happy to help you through that. And I hope you had a good session. Let me know um, if you had a good session and if you, you know, have any feedback. I'll be happy to take that on board as well. With that, trade well, trade safe. Please don't over trade, don't over leverage. Uh, that would be the one big problem um, that every trader should avoid immediately. All right. Take care now. Bye-bye.